Step into the world of The Rockford Files, a classic 1974 television series that left an enduring mark on the detective genre. Have you ever wondered about the behind-the-scenes tales that add a layer of fascination to this iconic show? Are there any lesser-known facts or anecdotes about The Rockford Files that intrigue you? As we delve into the depths of this television gem, let's explore some random tidbits that might pique your interest. Did you know that James Garner, who portrayed the laid-back private investigator Jim Rockford, performed many of his own stunts, injecting authenticity into the character's rugged demeanor? Additionally, the iconic answering machine used in the series became a symbol of Rockford's business, setting it apart in the realm of detective shows. Now, we're curious what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to the Rockford Files. We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Step back in time to the gritty streets of Los Angeles with the Rockford Files, where each episode unfolded like a page in a captivating mystery novel, leaving an indelible mark on television history. So, what's your Rockford tale? Share it with us! In France, the Rockford Files went by the name Du Cent Dollars plus Le Fries, a nod to the main character Jim Rockford's fee of $200 a day plus expenses. The show had a distinctive touch that resonated internationally. During the show's development, Robert Blake was initially considered for the lead role, but ended up being cast in Beretta instead, another creation by Stephen J. Cannell. The decision shaped the course of both series and showcased the casting dynamics in the television industry during that era. In the final season, James Garner faced health issues, leading to a temporary hiatus. Ten episodes were partially filmed before his leave of absence. Unfortunately, the network decided to cancel the Rockford Files while Garner was away, leaving the series incomplete and fans disappointed. These behind-the-scenes details add layers to the understanding of the Rockford Files, shedding light on its international recognition, casting decisions, and the challenges faced during its concluding season. James Garner, known as James Scott Rockford in the 1974 TV series, portrayed a character with depth and authenticity. However, behind the scenes, the choice of the name Rockford itself has an interesting origin. Co-writer Stephen J. Cannell discovered the name in the Universal Studios employee directory, and it became a pivotal element in shaping the identity of the show. Garner's real-life full name, James Scott Garner, adds another layer to the connection between the actor and his on-screen persona. The character of Rockford's father, named Joseph, but commonly referred to as Rocky, was a nod to Cannell's own father. This naming intricacy serves as a starting point to delve into the behind-the-scenes decisions that contributed to the show's identity. It reflects the meticulous thought process in crafting characters and underscores the personal touch in the series, making it more than just a detective drama. The Rockford Files, a 1974 TV series, boasted a unique behind-the-scenes narrative that often mirrored its unconventional on-screen approach. One significant aspect was its co-production involving three entities, production companies owned by Roy Huggins and James Garner, along with Universal Television. This collaboration, however, wasn't without its challenges. A contract dispute with Gretchen Corbett during season four led to her departure, and James Garner sued Universal over syndication profits. The settlement terms remain undisclosed, emphasizing the confidential nature of the resolution. Cherokee Productions, Garner's company, owned 37.5%, leaving the distribution of the remaining 62.5% ambiguous. The intriguing production dynamics aside, the show's early seasons harbored another interesting facet. Roy Huggins, credited under the pseudonym John Thomas James, drew inspiration from his son's names John, Thomas, and James. This creative touch added a personal element to the storytelling, a glimpse into the minds shaping the Rockford Files. Beyond its production nuances, the series found its place in TV history by challenging norms. Frequently landing on top series lists, The Rockford Files stood out for its quality writing, unconventional portrayal of a private investigator, and its departure from the typical TV detective tropes. Rockford's financial struggles, uneasy relationship with the police, and realistic portrayals of physical altercations resonated with audiences. The show's defiance of conventions became a defining trait, contributing to its enduring legacy. In a television landscape dominated by predictable narratives, the Rockford Files broke the mold, leaving an indelible mark on the industry. Its blend of production intricacies, personal touches, and narrative audacity set it apart as a timeless classic in the world of television. 
In the realm of TV classics, The Rockford Files carved its niche with a distinctive narrative and characters. One intriguing aspect behind the scenes was the nicknames Rockford's friends had for him, adding a personal touch to the character. From his father's Sonny to Becker's Jimbo, these monikers reflected the depth of relationships on screen. Meanwhile, the show's influence reached beyond its episodes. Co-writer David Chase, later famed for The Sopranos, paid homage in a first-season episode where characters tune in to the Rockford Files theme. A subtle nod, yet a testament to the series' enduring impact. However, not all off-screen stories were friendly. James Garner accused Glenn a Larson of plagiarism, leading to a fine. The confrontation escalated when Garner confronted Larson on set, resulting in an unexpected clash. These behind-the-scenes anecdotes shed light on the camaraderie and conflicts that shaped the Rockford Files, making it more than a mere detective drama. The series, with its quirks and controversies, left an undeniable mark on television history. James Garner, the iconic face behind the Rockford Files, shared an interesting tidbit in an interview. The license plate on Jim Rockford's Firebird 853 OKG wasn't just a random combination. Garner's agent, Meta Rosenberg, crafted it with precision. The numbers symbolize August 1953, marking Garner's first acting job and the state of Oklahoma, his hometown. The OKG at the end, well, that's Garner's own last name, making it August 1953, Oklahoma Garner. This seemingly small detail adds a personal touch to Rockford's character and highlights the thought put into the show's nuances. Speaking of details, Rockford's home and office, a 1959 Nasher House mobile home, became an integral part of the series. The set's fourth wall was strategically removed, allowing the customary shots from behind Rockford's desk. And for those occasional opposite angle shots, a portable wall did the job. It's a testament to the show's practical approach in creating a familiar and realistic environment for the viewers. The theme song, another cornerstone of the Rockford Files, made its mark in 1975. Climbing to number 10 on Billboard's Hot 100 list, it earned its spot based on radio airplay frequency and record sales. This achievement speaks volumes about the series' impact beyond the screen, with the catchy tune becoming a recognized part of pop culture. These behind-the-scenes glimpses into the license plate, set design, and theme song underscore the meticulous crafting of the Rockford Files. From personal touches in character details to practical considerations in set construction, each element contributes to the show's enduring legacy. It's a journey into the heart of a classic TV series that continues to resonate with audiences, transcending the boundaries of its initial broadcast. As we bid adieu to the enigmatic world of private investigator Jim Rockford and his intriguing escapades, let's take a moment to delve into the tapestry of memories woven by this classic TV series. For those who have traversed the vicissitudes of life alongside Rockford, there's an indescribable connection that transcends time and screen. The Rockford Files, a testament to storytelling at its finest, invites us to reflect on our own journeys. Perhaps you found solace in Rockford's laid-back demeanor or reveled in the clever twist that unfolded in each episode. It's more than a show. It's an immersive experience that has become an integral part of our personal landscapes. Now, as the credits roll and the echoes of the iconic theme linger, we encourage you to share your thoughts. What were your favorite moments? Did Rockford's resilient spirit resonate with your own? Feel free to embark on a nostalgic journey and let the words flow. Let's celebrate the enduring magic that this series has brought into our lives. Thank you for sharing this space and time with us. Hey, memories, thoughts, and reflections make this journey all the more enriching. Until we meet again in the world of captivating stories and compelling characters, thank you for your time and interest.